Welcome to a Red Hat Consulting Whiteboard Session. I'm Sarah Roth, an Associate Consultant with Red Hat, and this is my partner. I'm Carolyn Theo, a Senior Consultant with Red Hat Consulting. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the fundamentals of Ansible. We all know that it's an automation tool that system administrators and management uses to make their lives a lot easier. But what exactly is going on and what's happening under the covers? So this is what we're going to cover today in our whiteboard session. Yeah, that's a very interesting problem to look at. And the way we're going to approach it today is by looking at this example Ansible ad hoc command. So an ad hoc command is just a basic one line command that you run from your terminal. It's not packaged in a script or a playbook or anything like that. And this is our example today. So we have Ansible dash I our inventory, dash M our module, dash A our parameters. So in this specific case, our module is package and our parameters are name, vim, and state installed. So what this command is going to do is ensure that vim is installed on all the hosts in our inventory. So I'm going to type this into my terminal. I'm going to hit enter. What's the first thing that Ansible does? So the first thing that Ansible is going to do is it's going to parse the inventory. As part of this, each of the hosts in the inventory are going to select a particular connection plugin. So for this case that we're running through today, um, it's going to select the SSH connection plugin. Why does each host pick a connection plugin? Yeah, so that's a great question. So Ansible does this so that you can have multiple different types of hosts in one inventory file. So for example, virtual machines and container native plugins in OpenShift obviously have different ways of dealing with remote connections. So by having each host in the inventory select its own, uh, administrators don't have to maintain multiple inventory files, making their life a lot easier. That makes a lot of sense. So what happens next? Well, after we have our connection plugins, we're, Ansible is going to call the task executor. OK. And what's the task executor? The task executor is a core part of the Ansible code. It takes in your module and parameters, and then it orchestrates the rest of the Ansible command. OK. So what's the first thing it does? The first thing it's going to do is actually run the module you passed in. So we're using package, and package is a little bit of a special case. So the first thing it's going to do is run the package action plugin. And what that plugin is going to do is actually pick a new module to run. OK. So why does it pick a new module? It's actually very similar to what you were talking about before with the inventory. So here we have uh, two different types of hosts. We have a RHEL 7 and a RHEL 8 host. And RHEL 7 and RHEL 8 use different package managers. RHEL 7 has yum and RHEL 8 has DNF. So if we used a more specific plugin, administrators would have to do a whole bunch of extra work to account for all these different types of hosts and different package managers. The package plugin will abstract all of that away from you. And so you can just run your one command to update all of your hosts. Huh. Makes sense. Yeah. So once we have our new module, what does Ansible do next? Yeah, so the next thing is the task executor um, uses the SSH connection plugin, which we mentioned earlier for this example. So this handles the low level communication to stop and start the command via SSH. So once we have this connection established, what happens next? Well, once we have the connection, we can actually run the action on both of our hosts. So in this case, it's going to make sure Vim is installed in both these places. Then it's going to return the results back to our Ansible host uh, and the task executor. And the task executor is going to print those results and quit. Wow. So Ansible is doing all this under the covers. But by abstracting it away, administrators can focus on the bigger picture. Exactly. So if someone wants to get started either learning more about how Ansible works or implementing it in their environment, how could they do that? To get started, they can reach out to their existing Red Hat account executives or go to redhat.com services to get the conversation started.